MBGN Universe goes to no other than Miss Tarver and the winner, a number. Beautiful Adesa Yobo won the prestigious MBGN in 2008. She pursued her childhood dream by representing Anambra State in the MBGN pageant, competing alongside 29 other beautiful ladies. That same year, she represented Nigeria at the Miss World pageant in South Africa, where she ranked the top 20 in Miss World talent and placed second in Miss World sports. Her life soared and things changed. She sits with us on eWeekly Meet to reveal a very interesting journey. All right, for you, how was your experience and Miss World in 2008? Miss World was amazing. Like, it was... I always tell people that after Miss World, that, that's when you see the true beauty of all the beauty queens. Like, we go there and we learn a lot. We get more experience and we see other, like, people from different parts of the world and we uh, learn things that we didn't even know about before then. So it's a beautiful, like, it's probably one of the best experiences of my life. Nothing has stopped okay, well apart from having kids and being married. Nothing has stopped that. All right, before MBGN, who was Adese? Who was Adese Igwe? Should I say Adese Igwe? Yes. Who was Adese Igwe before the entire process from MBGN to Miss World and getting married and becoming a mother? You know, I can't really remember. <laughs> you lost touch with your old self. Because I'm still the same person. Just a loud, annoying, nice, um, Beauty queen wanna be. <laughs> that was it. I was, um, I was basically being um, and in going to MBJ, going for the competition was basically living my dream. And before, prior to that, I was always um, focused on uh, watching people on TV, walking on the runway, or uh, um, thinking about. I was very conscious of my beauty, my like how uh, tall that I had to be before, you know, going into modeling. So and my mom supported that. So whenever I see something, she's like, you know, you look like that girl. Hey, when you get older, you'll be like that. So I was very much conscious of being, uh, uh, being going, you know, to that phase, you know, that I was in. So before then, I was working towards being that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I knew that I, I would never uh, rest or be satisfied if I wasn't a beauty queen or it didn't matter if I won or not just going through that experience of living my dream and all that was what mattered and thankfully thankfully to God I lived out my that part of my dream all right for ladies who still have that thing in their mind I don't know where they got it from thinking as just light-skinned girls who win beauty pageants who are featured in music videos who become popular you know on television or who act what do you have to tell them? I don't even know where that comes from. I, I see it a lot and I feel like they're, I, I don't want to be very like negative towards them, but I feel like it's um, very, people with very low self-esteem that think that, because I've seen a, the girl who won Miss World, Abani, you know, she, Miss World, not even just uh, Miss Nigeria, she was also Miss World. Mm -hmm. So why would you think that it's just light-skinned girls that have it? Like, it's just a way for them to say, you know, I'm not even going for that beauty pageant because I'm not light-skinned. They always just like to say, no, that's not true. And we know that's not true. So I don't know where they get that from, but it's just to make themselves feel good. And if that's okay with them, they can keep saying it to themselves instead of just moving forward and, you know, being what they want to be in life. Now, looking at your process, I mean, the transition from going through MBGN, Miss World, and becoming a mother, how would you, you know, how would you define that transition in your life? Um, there's a lot. You know, I'm 26 now, but I feel like I'm like 40 something, <laughs> you know? Because I feel like I can't have a conversation with my age mates, like a proper conversation with things that I, you know, that I've gone through, like my experience in life, and from, um, the part where I was um, the MBGN to go into Miss World, even before then, like every part of my life, like was step by step before I got to MBGN. And I felt like from that part till now, it just went from zero to 100. Like I jumped so many phases, and now I feel like I'm coming back to learn those things that I missed. You know, I feel like I want to have, I'm looking at my age and I'm like, 
I know it's, it's weird for me to say that, but I'm like, I'm getting old and I need to have more fun. I need to care less about what people think. And that's actually the most important thing I learned all through, you know, with this. I know people will be like, she's just 26, what does she know? But I, what I have to say is just being 26, I have learned that you have to care less about what people think about you. Do what you want to do. And, you know, with all that experience, I feel like that's the number one thing I learned with all the process that I've been through. Now, being a public figure, obviously, when you became a beauty queen, you became really popular. And getting married to a very popular footballer, how have you been able to manage critics and, you know, who come at both of you, especially you, with negative vibes? All those people saying things or speaking for me, I don't even know them. They could be, like, somewhere, like, living a very... I'm sorry to say, living a very miserable life and their like self-esteem is like they are pushing it on me for no reason. So I'm actually living my life for someone who um, is very, you know, miserable and probably going to hang themselves anytime, you know, from the time they wrote that. When I thought that to myself, I was like, you know, I can't like that person is actually controlling me or whoever it is. And if I wanted everything to stop, I was the one who had the right to make it stop. If I wanted my marriage, you know, to break, I was the one who had the right to do it. If I wanted to go on, I was the one who had the right to do it. That was when I, you know, became in control of myself. Now, being a public figure, obviously, when you became a beauty queen, you became really popular. And getting married to a very popular footballer, how have you been able to manage critics and you know who come at both of you especially you with negative vibes a lot all the time um they uh always have something to say you know there's never a time i put up a picture that they don't have anything to say like i told you when for instance my son someone just said he has a pop belly he needs to go to the gym who says that so and they don't even affect me anymore like he used to like i told you but it doesn't affect me so I'm as active as I am real life. Like that's actually my life. The only thing I probably don't show is when I fight with my husband, you know, or when I cuss out people in Igbo. That's the only thing that I don't show. That's the only part that I probably don't show about my life. But the way I'm active, loud, I think people can see how loud I am actually from the way I type and, you know, that's how I am real life. And I, nothing can change it. I can't even change it. It's my nature and I enjoy social media like I'm, I'm a desert and I'm obsessed with Instagram especially yes so I can't even lie I try to deny it and people are like you're actually obsessed with this I'm like yeah I am <laughs> and I enjoy it now getting married at an early age would you say it was an achievement you were ready for at that age I wasn't ready I didn't even plan and I think it happens with most beauty queen like when you um, after the crown you feel like you're about to live your life so um, you stop pushing. If you had plans to be to be married at 25, you're like, oh, I think I'll make it 35. You know, you keep changing because you want to like, you love that life and you enjoy it. You never had that life before. Other people would date for a while because I didn't date my husband for a while. Date for a while and then um, know, oh, this is really what I want. They both agree and then they get married. I was, wasn't like that. Basically, the first few years we were married, it was more like we were dating because we were kind of getting to know more about each other. So it was a bit stressful. And the third year, we found out, like, oh, I actually love you more than before. And then, you know, we just started, like, leaving that marriage from the third year, basically. At any point in your life, well, let's say as a young girl, did you ever have that dream of getting married to a footballer? Because most girls want to marry footballers. I mean, look at Victoria Beckham. I'm sure she's happy. Since I was a child, I always had some sort of, I don't know, I didn't know, I didn't watch football that much. My brother played and I used to play football. I was a tomboy when I was a baby and I used to play, I was the only girl that used to play football with guys and I would play with it. I would just say, oh, I'm going to marry a footballer <laughs> one day. So, and I actually, like, my first boyfriend played football. Really? Yes. So had that football player. Yes, and he always wanted to play internationally. So, yeah. Now, do you still watch football because of your husband or do you just watch when he's playing? When he was playing, I was obsessed. He, I had to calm him down. Like, I would go to the, uh, like in the Turkish league especially, they would have me in the camera all the time because I would be screaming like a crazy person. And I like to scream, as you can tell from my voice. So I would scream and shout and you know, if the referee does something bad, I would like swear in Turkey because I speak a little bit of Turkey. So I would swear in Turkey and cuss him out. And the, all the Turkish people, because I'm the, probably the only black person around that, where they are, they look at me like, what is she saying? And then they start laughing. And I was obsessed with football when he was playing. Now talk to us about the good sides of, you know, getting married to 
a footballer. I mean, I want to be jealous right now. I saw the Range Rover, so let's get jealous a bit, please. I say the attention, not here in Nigeria, because he didn't. I didn't really go to his games here, but in Turkey, the attention was crazy. So we would go out, and then they would see my son and call him by name randomly in the mall, and then they will come take pictures with us, and it was the attention. Everyone loves the attention, and I loved every bit of it. All right, now looking at family, what's your relationship with family? At least, you know, when all this happened, when all this started, are you still in touch with your mom? Of course. Okay. My, mom will, my mom is like my best friend. We fight, we love each other, we fight again and we love each other. Like, she would always be there. We, she was there from the beginning, you know, she's, she's like the mama, she's always everywhere with me. And my sister, same. And my brothers, you're um, in school, so we see each other. Now, for girls who still want to get into the beauty pageant business and are still mixed up with decisions, what do you have to tell them? I'd say go for it. Don't listen to any lies, you know. Um, people say a lot of things and uh, don't pay any attention to any of them. Just go. It could be you. Like, you don't even know. Like, while I was there, I didn't even... I had no clue and that even gave me more like on a normal day I wouldn't think I would go for Miss World and even think of winning you know but after um, I saw how I won I wasn't expecting to win but I I mean I was praying and I had faith to win but I didn't think it was just gonna come like that you know for some reason and um, when I went for Miss World it made that boost you know that I had that you know big uh, self-confidence that I was going to go in and win this world, you know? It was really big, but I felt like, you know when you see something really far and you feel like you can't reach it? After MBGN, I felt like it was right in front of me and I could hold it, you know? Because I felt like that part of my dream was accomplished. Why not Miss World, you know? So um, it could be you, so you have to just go. If, you, if that's what you want to do, go for it. Like, don't listen to any lies. While I was there, at some point, um, MBJ people said oh they already know who is gonna win they were like talking to me oh they already know they already know is this girl I know the girls they said they were gonna win they didn't even make it to the top three there are a lot of things for everyone is a winner basically when you go for MBJ and I'm always grateful for um, you know being a winner you know, being MBJ you know I'm always I always think back to it and I always thank God for giving me that platform to be able to you know that changed my life basically Baby, you're driving me.